Good morning, everybody. So we are heading out of San Francisco today, and we are going to the Winchester Mystery House. So come on along. We'll see what that's all about. After that, we're heading down to Pismo Beach, and we're going to check into a hotel there. So let's go see what that's all about. Okay, you guys, this video is going to be a little bit different because there was no video recording allowed inside of the mystery house. So we took a ton of photos while we were there and we're going to share them all with you here. So we were running a little bit late for this because we decided to drive over the Golden Gate Bridge twice. Not just once, but twice. And that's because the bridge was super foggy when we got there and it was an icon we definitely wanted to see. Look at that fog. There's a the Golden Gate Bridge! Somewhere in there. So we decided to go over the bridge and then we had to come back in order to get down to San Jose and get to the mystery house. So because of this, we were a little bit late to the mystery house. Now, lucky for us, the mystery house has a very lenient late policy. They know all about traffic. And so they were very accommodating. We were about five minutes late for our one o'clock appointment. And being that far behind, they just caught us up to our group who happened to be going over the rules when we got there. As the story goes, Sarah Winchester inherited the Winchester rifle fortune after her husband, who was named William Wirt Winchester, passed away. Now, she also happened to lose her mother and her father-in-law all within the same year. It was between the fall of 1880 and the spring of 1881. So unfortunately, she lost her eldest sister, Mary, in 1884. And at that time, she developed rheumatoid arthritis, which super easy for me to say. Now you're going to see this within her design because she put in a lot of small, tiny little steps. And sometimes that took you up like seven uh, turns in order to get up these tiny little steps. She was a small woman to begin with and then she's got these tiny little steps. So we did do quite a bit of stepping while we were there. So with this diagnosis, her doctor suggested to her that she move somewhere with a little bit of warmth. She was living at the time in New Haven, Connecticut, and she decided to head on up to California. Now, she did have a daughter, Annie, in 1866, but sadly she didn't survive more than a month. So this poor woman has been through so much heartbreak and I can just imagine how difficult that must have been. So in 1885, at the age of 46, she decided to make this move. Now, I don't know why this surprised me, but the house itself sits in the middle of San Jose. I was expecting it to be, you know, somewhere in the country. However, it is surrounded by buildings and that should not have been a surprise. However, when she purchased the property, it happened to be a two-story, eight-room farmhouse and it sat on 45 acres. So we have to use our imaginations here. You can see she was really big into architecture and she also shared a love of the number 13, which I also have a love of the number 13. So I thought it was quite funny that uh, you can see these reoccurring themes all over the place, but we chose to visit on the 13th of August and it was also the 13th hour. So that was pretty fun as we didn't know that beforehand. Um, now I think this is where the folklore kind of takes over as it said that she saw many spirits of those people that were killed by the Winchester uh, rifles and uh, to be honest I was hoping to catch sort of an orb or a light or something that's unexplained um, and the best I can do is in these photos you can see up in the corner here I've got this weird face um, now it's probably just somebody peeking through the window with me uh, however I just thought it was a funny thing if you can see something else in my photos please let me know folklore says that 
she had a psychic tell her to continue building on and that's the story we're going to go with here. It was pretty standard practice at the time for somebody to see a psychic and you'll see here she does have a seance room and it had two exits and one entrance I believe is the thing. She would go into it at night, there was a bell that chimed and uh, there's a whole story behind the seance room so that was pretty interesting as well. Now by all accounts she was a very well loved woman and she was very intelligent so she was very good to her contractors and they stuck around and helped her out throughout the entire time that she was building. Now when this woman died it said that her house had 160 rooms, 2,000 doors, 10,000 windows, 47 staircases, 47 fireplaces, 13 bathrooms and 6 kitchens. We happened to see a fraction of that and we're gonna go through and look at she had a bedroom prior to the 1906 earthquake and it was damaged and they've left it damaged it had been boarded up she boarded it up and we were able to take a look at some of this damage as well as go into the damaged kitchen and if she had that much space she was able to use whatever room she wanted so it was just really interesting to see her personality come out through all of these different aspects in her house. And we thoroughly enjoyed touring around and seeing everything that this house had to offer. The tour guide was also very knowledgeable. They did go with the ghostly story of, of her trying to um, ward off these spirits. And that sort of just played along with the whole story and us looking for things within our photos. Now, I didn't find anything. If you can find something, that would be fantastic. And you can let me know if you do see anything in these photos. But other than that, just the fascinating life and uh, creativity behind this build. It's an amazing thing to go and see. And it is such a look into the past. Now, after our visit to the Winchester Mystery House, we had to head on down to Pismo Beach, and we were hoping to go down Highway 1. We wanted to go down through Big Sur and do all of the sightseeing that we could do. However, that road was completely closed off, and it said there was no detour. So we ended up going a different route. We missed a lot of the scenic drive that we wanted to do. We had plans to drive down Highway 1 and uh, stop along the coast and see like Big Sur and Carmel by the Sea and all of those places. And we passed the exit, we ended up going back and unfortunately it is closed oh, south of Big point. Sur. So we ended up actually staying on the 101. So, oh well, next time we'll have to make another trip out here and uh, do that drive down the coast, but not today. We're gonna head on to our hotel in Pismo Beach and hopefully we'll get some time on the beach there. So, Madonna, Vogue, it's very Vogue. It's a good one. Thank you. Good thing you didn't pick that place. Okay. Hey, your mom is there the Madonna is. girl. There it is, the Madonna Inn. We tried to stay at yeah, the Madonna Inn, here. yes. Yeah. And if you don't know what that is, you should definitely look that up. But uh, they have such fascinating rooms. And the problem was that uh, they're all king-size beds and, or at least the adjoining rooms were king-size beds and uh, we have five people, they wouldn't allow us to stay in two king-size rooms. We would have fit, but, and we would have been okay with it, but I, they wouldn't let us do that. So we are going on further to Pismo Beach and we have a great suite there. We made it. Whee! This is exciting. And with that said, I hope you guys really enjoyed that. Woo. Sit down, Liam. Looks like a nice place. Yeah, yeah it looks very right. nice. What's this? We made it. Lobby, first floor. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, this okay. and We're in the Let's building right next to the lobby. Three or four. We're going down. We're up. Right here. Right here. Okay. Oh. Here we and go. Oh yeah, we'll start here. Okay, let me put my suitcase down. We'll take a quick look. This is a two two room suite, which is lovely. And there are two looks like queen beds. 
in here. I love all their little fixtures. Let's turn this light on. They're adorable. And you get and you get a view of outside where the playground is. Yeah, the only thing, yeah, is that we're right off the playground. They've got the windows open right now so you can hear everybody, but hopefully this is not loud. I am not a loud kind of a person. They've got a little ensuite bathroom. There's two. Oh my, there's, there's the there. fan. Well, there's one bathroom there and then there's one on the other side. That's right, pal. There's like a huge bedroom on the other side. It's like... It's like You've got a full-size mirror. Hello, everybody. And then outside. So let's go into the other room. And again, they've got the they've got the screen door open so that you can hear what's going on outside. Now, when I booked this, yeah, it was supposed to be a partial ocean view, and I guess you can partially see the ocean from here. And a king size bed in this room. And I love the lamps. So a couple of hey, nightstands. Hey, There's my other lamp. A huge closet with a nice light in there. Room. It's like over here. Mommy, Mr. Room, it's right here. Oh, this oh that's the door. To the side. There we go. So there's water for five dollars. There's our king size room, microwave, mini fridge, coffee maker. Thank you, my little assistant. And the second bathroom. What have we got? Body lotion. Oh, earplugs. Okay, so they expect it to be loud. Soap. Q-tips. And then your shampoo is on the wall in the shower. Yeah. I mean, first impressions, it's, it's cute. Perfect. All right, let's get settled in. I'm out on the balcony. You can definitely smell that salt water and the fish. We've got a couple of cute little chairs out here in the light. You can see the pool, which is pretty sweet. Almost wish we had more time here. We only have one night and it's already 7.30. So we're gonna head out, find something to eat. Awesome. All right, right outside of our room, we have this little area. I have the car key. But you can play Connect Float. Connect for Liam. Can we play a quick round? A quick, quick round. Tennis, table tennis, okay, playground, yellow, sitting yellow. area. I'm, I'm yellow, here's me. Cornhole. And you can rent a bike. This place is super cool. Okay, pal, let's do this. I'm yellow, you're green. 